Hey everybody, welcome back. I just wanted to show you something a little bit different, something I was working on. So I took this photo of this CP Grain Train uh, about a month ago in February. Uh, this is Grain Train 301, which is uh, loads headed south on the Red Deer Sub uh, headed to Calgary. So it was a nice day out and I uh, took some photos and I wanted to do an accurate breakdown. If you're going to model a modern CP Grain Train, how many cars do you have to have on the train to accurately represent the prototype as far as paint schemes go? Basically, what, what cars would you need to kind of represent a modern CP grain train? So, like I said, it was a nice day out, sun was great, so I took a, I took a photo of every car on that train. This was a typical CP unit grain train, two units on the head end, uh, mid-train DPU total of uh, 110 cars so that's uh, all, I took a photo of all 110 grain cars and then I broke it down on a spreadsheet and I just wanted to uh, to share this with you guys, so yeah, it was CP301 uh, February 26th 2017 so here's all the cars, the breakdowns, so two units on the head end there, it was all AC 4400's, no surprise but uh, what, what I found is that, and I, I suspected this, but these modern day grain trains are getting pretty bland as far as uh, paint schemes go. And I did, I wrote down the type of car as best I could. Um, some of them, you know, you can't, if there's graffiti or whatever, rusting, and you can't get the actual type of car, but most of them I got them. And most, you know, they're all NSC or, you know, 4550s, whatever. So I put the cubic foot and the car builder, as well as the paint scheme. So they're all on there, the whole train. Um, well, just to note, the, uh, here's the DPU. So that was in the spot uh, 58. So that means there was 55 cars. Basically, they had the, the DPU exactly smack dab in the center of that 110 car string. So 50 car, two engines, 55 cars, the DPU, and then 55 cars trailing that. So if you're modeling it, however many cars you have on your train and you're modeling, um, the DPU will go right in the center. Divide that by two and put the DPU there. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't uh, realize that that's how they ran them. I think it, I thought it was more just random somewhere in the middle as long as it was you know, close to the center. But on this train, the DPU was smack dab in the center of the train length. So what's surprising is... Uh, I noted there was 14 different paint schemes, which is a surprise to me. So out of all those 110 cars on that train, there's only 14 variations in paint. And uh, so here's the number of cars that, uh, the number of each representation. So you know there's two blue Alberta Heritage front cars out of 110. 14 just plain gray. And I had the black CP Rail Multimark, there's one of those. And then you can see the big portion, the most cars on it were the old, the NSC 5200 cubic foot, uh, just with gray with the CP rail red letters. There's 25 of those. So this column here, that's the percentage. We won't go too far into this, but, you know, if you want to really study it, you can just pause and, and look at the different numbers. But this is, so this is the number of cars on the prototype train. The, this is the percentage breakdown. So of the 110 um, so 1.82% were the Alberta Heritage Fund, so really small, you know, the colorful cars, the green Saskatchewan car, 0.9% of the train, one of those cars on the whole train. So for us modelers, so say you're, I, I did three different numbers here, so 60 car train, what I, which would I consider something, that'd be a pretty big HO scale train, some guys do run them that big, so if you're going to do a 60 car train, how many cars of each paint scheme would you have to have to accurately represent uh, the modern day actual prototype? And this is that, that number of cars. So you'd have one blue heritage car, you'd have seven plain gray, etc, etc. I did 32 cars in this column because that's how long the trains are going to be on my layout. So this is the breakdown for me to get to the uh, my target of a 25 foot train. So 32 cars plus the three locomotives. And then I just did a smaller number, so if you're running a 20 car train, these, these are your numbers there. 
So it's kind of interesting, uh, lots of gray, and it'd be, it's, it's really like the modern day trains are pretty boring, and I think it's going to get worse as they start retiring more of the uh, 4550 cubic foot, the old uh, government cars, because they're nearing end of life. But uh, this is just for fun, this is just a graph uh, showing those same numbers. And then I just did a, I did a graph too, to just kind of show you uh, visually what it looks like so you can see there the gray CP rail that's the most cars there and then the brown and yellow 4550 cubic foot to government of Canada hoppers quite a few of those third place is the gray CP beaver logo which are the NSC 5300 cubic foots and then it's kind of a mishmash red government of Canada comes in there plain gray and then uh, just a handful of the, the other cars the one really oddball was this uh, Lake Erie Franklin and Carry On Railroad, kind of neat. Uh, I think it was lettered for EEC, but that was really the only oddball car. So this was the one, uh, yeah, th this car here, sorry, it wasn't lettered for EEC, it was actually lettered for Sioux, which is uh, weird, never seen one of these before, but... It's cool when you see the really random cars like this, but they really are a small percentage of what's on the trains nowadays. So that's just something I want to share with you guys. I'm kind of into the statistics. Well, I like working with numbers and figuring stuff out like this, so kind of neat. So if you want to model uh, an accurate CP unit grain train in 2017, uh, those are the numbers for it.